In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. Today is Tuesday, the 31st of December, 2019. We are on the seventh day within the octave of Christmas. It is also the last day of this last month of the year 2019. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this year. The church celebrates the feast of St. Sylvester the First, Pope. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Come, O Lord, to the help of your people, sustained by the intercession of Pope St. Sylvester, so that running the course of this present life under your guidance, we may happily attain life without end. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the first letter of St. John. Chapter 2, verses 18 to 21. The Gospel from St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. I read from the Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being. Not one thing came into being except through him. What has come into being in him was life, life that was the light of men. And light shines in darkness, and darkness could not overpower it. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness to the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light. He was to bear witness to the light. The Word was the real light that gives light to everyone. He was coming into the world. He was in the world that had come into being through Him, and the world did not recognize Him. He came to His own, and His own people did not accept Him. But to those who did accept Him, He gave power to become children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born not from human stock or human desire or human will, but from God himself. The word became flesh. He dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that he has from the Father as only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John witnesses to him. He proclaims, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me has passed ahead of me because he existed before me. Indeed, from his fullness we have all of us received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
let your light shine let your light shine beloved in today's gospel the evangelist john explains that jesus the light has come into the world but many still prefer the darkness light comes to illumine light comes to make places bright on the contrary Darkness covers while light unveils. Jesus comes as light of the world to make the world shine. But as St. John explains, many still prefer to remain in the darkness of their lives. The darkness of sin. The darkness of error. He came to his own, but he was not accepted. From the day of his birth, Jesus already began to face stiff opposition and rejection. No one gave them a room. No home in the inn. Do you think or suppose because there were none? Not at all. There were. Rooms were available. But definitely not for them. Because they did not want them. He was left in the cold and finally born in a manger because he was not welcome. He remained a stranger even among his own people. He came as light to dispel the darkness of falsehood, the darkness of hate, the darkness of lies, of evil, and to shine forth with the light of truth, the light of peace, the light of love, the light of goodness, and the life of goodness in him. Dear friends, celebrating Christmas as a feast goes far beyond food, drink, gifts, and clothes. If we do not welcome Christ and give him a place in our hearts, a place in our homes, and a place in our society, then, as was on that day at Bethlehem, then even today, we still refuse to give him room in our inn. If we do not welcome Christ, and what he represents. It means, though the light has come, we still prefer darkness. No wonder. We still continue to live in division. We still continue to live in hate. We still continue to live in war. We still continue to live in disharmony, though Christ the light has come. How can we prove we have welcomed Christ the light? It can be seen from our words and deeds. When we preach love, when we live love, when we advocate for peace, when we preach peace, when we are always there to reconcile conflict and hate, when we are always ready to forgive and to move on, then it shows that we have welcomed Christ the light. When we live a life that represents Christ, a life full of grace and love of God, on the contrary, we reject Christ by doing just the opposite. When we live a life of sin, when we continue to live in hate, when we continue to live in anger, in division, promoting war, then, though Christ the light has come, we prefer darkness. Dear God's good people, we need to welcome Christ the light and give him room in our inn the inn of our hearts, of our homes, of our families, of our society and of our world. Therefore, to prove that Christ the light has come and we have welcomed him as we did celebrate on Christmas Day, families that had conflicts should already be moving towards resolving their conflicts. Individuals that had misunderstandings should already be moving towards solving their problems. Those whom we refused to forgive, we should already start moving towards forgiving them. Those for whom we bred hate and anger, we should already start preaching love, peace and reconciliation. In that way, we have welcomed Christ the light. If we refuse to do all this, brethren, then just like St. John says, though the light has come, we have not welcomed him, though we have celebrated Christmas 
and we have chosen to remain in darkness. Similarly, dear friends, be assured of this. If you represent Christ the light, you will also be rejected and hated because our world does not like the light and truth and prefers to remain in its darkness. Consequently, it will kill and destroy the light. What a funny world it is. Trying to be different in a positive way rather brings criticisms and condemnation. It is a world where people hate to see someone who challenges their lives by trying to be different in a positive way. So they will call you names. They will rather try to bring you down. Because our world hates the truth. Our world hates the light. Our world hates to see someone who challenges them. Because they want to remain in their life of sin. They want to remain in their life of evil. They do not like positive challenge. It rather kills those who are truthful and those who represent the light. Those who represent peace. When you are good, when you try to be different, when you try to be truthful, it is said you are showing off. And you are hated for it. For as though to be good has become something bad. What does he want to claim? What does she want to show? Wait till he remember. You do good, they say you are proud. But do not shy away, beloved, from doing what is good. People will say things negative and positive. But because we are not out to please men, but to please God, we should always remain determined and remain focused on our road. Let us pray for that grace, beloved. It is never easy, though we say it, to be hated, to stand for the truth, to stand for peace, to stand for Christ the light, you will meet criticisms, even from your very own. But let us pray for the grace that we may remain strong. Let us pray for the grace that we may remain committed. And rather than dance in the darkness of the world, let us continue to remain the light, the light of Christ, and shine out to illumine the darkness of our world. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this year. Let it be a day of thanksgiving, thanking God for the wonders of his love for us. We wish each and every one of you a very blossoming and fulfilling new year tomorrow. Amen.